Ricky Seals Jones, RSJ, our namesake there. Not a humongous day. Five catches, eight targets, 41 yards. But still, for a tight end, that's pretty good. It was top 12 this last week. More intriguing, though, is the usage. 99% snap rate, 87% route rate. Eight targets was a 19.5, nearly 20% target share. That was higher than any single game Logan Thomas had while healthy so far this year. The usage is encouraging. He almost had another 35-yard bomb that was negated by a penalty. There's upside here. Ricky Seals-Jones is a freak, big body, like 6'7 guy that blazes. We wrote about him a ton a few years ago. Blazes like a 4-5, complete size speed nightmare that they they have nobody else. We've got, who else hurt there? Curtis Samuel banged up. Diami Brown banged up. Like it's going to be Terry McLaurin, Ricky Seals-Jones, and Adam Humphreys, I guess, at this point. And he gets the Chiefs defense we were just talking about, giving up so many big plays and scores. I think he's a great bet to find the end zone this week. Look what Dawson Knox just did. Seals Jones could destroy this team deep down the scenes coming up this week. One of my favorite tight end streams this week and moving forward until Logan Thomas is back. Big fan of RSJ, Ricky Seals Jones. Alex Collins, I did want to mention, uh, not because he had a monster day, eight fantasy points, you know, 9.4 in PPR leagues, okay. But he did play 71% of the snaps. This did come against a great Rams run defense. He did run a route on 58% of the dropbacks. Yes, that you know DJ Dallas worked in. But now without Russell Wilson, you've got to imagine they're going to get very run heavy. So if Chris Carson does continue to miss time, I think you can go back to the well with Collins. He was really just a touchdown away from having a great day. You know, nine fantasy points without finding the end zone isn't that bad. It was frustrating in the sense that it was just such an easy hype, like Thursday night, let's go Alex Collins. But every time he's gotten work, he's looked solid. He's got that deadly spin move. Steelers are a tough matchup here in week six. So if you can get some of those other running backs we talked about, Daryl Williams, Devontae Booker, like go to those guys first. But Collins, they, and the other note is, you know, they're saying Carson is progressing rapidly right now um, and that he should, he's day to day. There was rumblings that he might have to go to the IR at one point. So clearly things are trending right for Carson, which means Collins' usability is, is dw- just dwindling right now. But you might get at least one more week and clearly a neck stinger like that that could pop up at any point. We've seen Carson have injury problems throughout his career. I think Collins is worth the hold because he's, again, 71% snap player without Carson, like a, a de facto kind of pseudo every down back. And offense that, yeah, Geno Smith's going to definitely lessen the appeal of this overall offense. But he, he filled in pretty admirably, and they still have Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf on the outside. Like, they're going to be able to still do some damage. So... I like Alex Collins, kind of like this Khalil Her- Herbert kid. I-, I really liked him coming out of college. I hated the landing spot, but he's done nothing but impress so far. Particularly, you're getting the usage. 18 carries with a team high, 52% of the, the total there. He also played 34 snaps, 53%, so more than Williams there. I guess the, the rub here comes that they had a 14-3 to lead, and then Herbert really started to take over. 11 of the team high, 18 carries did come in the second half. Damian Williams also got all of the targets, but Herbert could catch the ball coming out of college. Uh, and also Damian Williams did get all the inside the 10, three or three or four at least looks inside the 10. So the money touches are going to Damian, who's looking like a rock solid RB2 till Montgomery comes back. But Herbert is seeing the usage that if you're desperate, you know, uh, running back getting 10 plus carries is always at least worth considering. At 19% roster, I think you could toss you know six, eight bucks on him and see what happens. Another guy in that kind of situation of what's going to happen with the starter, Samaje Pirine. He looked good. I talked about it coming into the week. You know, every time he's, he only seen 13 carries once and he put up 93 yards and two TDs and caught four balls. This last week he had 15 touches and what do you do, but find the end zone, but when you're 60 ish yards, quality, useful day. He played 41 of 19 snaps compared to Mixon. Saw 15 touches to Mixon's 11. Chris Evans saw, you know, a couple targets, but he was nowhere to be seen. P. Ryan was the, the goal, back, goal line back, the third down back. He does it. He's on the COVID list now, so you got to track that. Because then Chris Evans, who's, you know, only 2% rostered, would become a smash play at that point. But I do really like Samaj P. Ryan. Um, I like, I mean... <laughs> Okay, that's that's aggressive. As he came out, I was like, "Yeah, I don't, I don't love the talent. I don't love the player, but I do like the usage." 
and just track Joe Mixon's usage uh, in practice this week. If he's full, then you know, cut, cut P. Ryan, no need to cling on to him. But at this point, worth checking out uh, for sure. And my last guy, the Barry and Saves, I just typed that in. Mon Ra St. Brown, one of the best names to say in the league, but also one of the better receiver pickups of the week. He had seven to eight targets and 65 yards. All of those were team highs. Quintus Cephas is on the IR, potentially done for the year with a uh, collarbone injury. That actually resulted in St. Brown, who had been like limited to only three receiver sets because he was locked in the slot, playing nearly 30% of his snaps outside. And he's dominated. Now led the Bengals in targets in back-to-back weeks. So the usage has been solid. And he gets the Bengals this week, who've given him the eighth most for fantasy points, two wide receivers. There's a little bit of wide receiver flex juice here. Absolutely worth a potential squeeze to see what he does. I think he's by far the most talented guy on here. And now that the usage is going to finally come, I'm intrigued. Another stash and potentially usable, depending on what happens with Damian Harris's chest injury. We got Ramondre Stevenson, the big boy, the preseason leader in rushing yards. Yes, Bolden, you know, seeing 13.7% target share, very, very, very poor man's James White. He's got that role, but Stevenson has some pass catching chops too. And didn't get any targets. But if Harris misses time, this guy could rumble. He could wear down defenses as we saw in the preseason. I think there's some real upside to him. And I also think the last stash I got here tonight, and then on to your 25 questions, get more in. Let's load it up, Wolfpack. Marlon Mack, not because I think he's going to do anything of note with the Chiefs, but because they're interested in trading for him, trading him. And guess who's interested in trading for him? The Chiefs. And that actually kind of does make Daryl Williams a bit riskier to blow your complete fab load on. Marlon Mack, though. First extensive action, over nine yards per pop on his four or five carries. I forget exactly what it was. Looked like he was fully back. He could do damage with the Chiefs if this injury lingers and they trade for him. Could damage in some backfields. Chiefs would be the most notable one, of course. Worth stashing to see where does this guy land, for sure. What is up, you fantasy wolf? Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, share your thoughts in the comments. Check out some more videos. And join the newest Wolfpack by subscribing below.